But let's go through those three things. There's aptitude, motivation, and training, right? Now, as the owner, I've got to be responsible for constantly training, okay? And I don't think there's any such thing as an employee who begs you to train them more, okay? They don't like having meetings. They don't like role playing. But you've got to think about it. If you, if you have a, a black belt or a second degree black belt, you're prepping, let's say, for the third degree black belt and for the championship match, right? Well, how much time do you expect them to spend training? Well, probably a lot, right? Well, it's the same thing for your school. Do you want your school to be a championship school or not? And you don't want them to be like practicing their enrollment process on life prospects because everyone they lose costs you five grand. You want them to be practicing their enrollment process with you or with uh, uh, another staff member on video and critiquing it and getting it better before they get in the ring. And every piece of the process in your school has to be like that. People don't become just great teachers magically. They become t great teachers because they're taught teaching methodology. They're taught classroom structure. They're taught how to use their voice. They're taught how to use their body. They're taught how to teach, how to interact with other people and build rapport. They're taught about the fact that touch has an impact, that voice tone has an impact, that using their name has an impact. People don't become a great salesperson just because they're a vibrant personality. They become great at sales because they memorize your info call script. They memorize the greeting script, the confirmation script, the, the intro outline, the reschedule script, the enrollment conference script, and then they learned how to do it in an engaging way. They learned how to, how to uh, truly ask a question and you know, listen to the answer, which most people don't do, right? So they, they, they learn communication, listening skills, learn how to, to, to translate enthusiasm. So if you have those three elements with staff, aptitude, and if you have somebody with that aptitude, I'm just saying you can't fix that, right? If you have somebody who doesn't come to the job with a high level of motivation, ready to set the world ablaze, ready to really make this happen, I don't think we can fix that. I mean, I, 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 I can give them carrots, and I can you know, create a stick, and I can do everything in the world possible to keep from getting screwing up their motivation, okay? But... I think people come to a new job highly motivated and then what we have a tendency to do is screw it up, right? Mm -hmm. But if they don't come to the job highly motivated, if they want to come in and work 20 hours a week on a full-time job, if they don't want to set the alarm early in the morning and get out of bed and go do something, if they don't want to be uh, an independent self-starter, if they don't want to be uh, held accountable for the results of the school as opposed to just their activities, you don't want them, right? I mean, you know, gophers are a dime a dozen. We don't need that. What we need is independent self-starters who are going to get up in bed in the morning and come 